Hey, good morning everybody. This is Organic Dairyman and welcome back to my channel. Today is Saturday, January 20th. And I hope your, your guys' day is going great. Mine's going okay so far. And anyways, what are we up to here today? Well, I'm going to go out and finish cultivating that soybean field. I've probably got maybe a couple hours left out there to do. Well, with this four row, if I had an eight row, it'd be maybe an hour. Anyways, my brother, he is milking right now. Um, I helped him get started milking. And so he's gonna finish that up. And I'm gonna go out and get this job done. He's gonna check the engine oil. The engine oil is good to go. And I'm gonna fire this thing up and go out and finish that field. And uh, then, um, well, Part of the reason why I'm going to finish it too, because there is a chance of rain throughout the day, and we want to get the this that field done out here because um, I got most of it done, but it is that I don't want the weeds to get too tall, otherwise you're not going to kill them, and you're not going to, you know, it's not going to do a good job of killing them. And if it's not raining when we get done with when my brother gets done with milk, and then I get done with that, and the hay isn't too wet because it is, we had had a few sprinkles here this morning. Then we're going to go down and finish chopping the hay that we have cut down. Yeah, that's still down. We haven't cut any more down yet. So, but anyways, I'm going to get this thing warming up here. And uh, then maybe while that's warming up, I'm going to go feed the cows. And then get it going. <laughs> Okay, I am back up in the yard, or back home. Anyways, I did not get done cultivating. I have eight rows left to cultivate, but the wind is picking up and the sun is shining, so that means the hay is drying. Did that rhyme? I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so I'm gonna head down there with this thing and we're gonna start chopping get that hay that we that was cut down yesterday get that chopped up and then my brother will go and cut some more hay down and then i'll go back and finish cultivating those last eight rows it's like one round is a whole mile so it takes a little bit to do that so better get this thing moving Our chopping is going okay. Uh, I think my brother must have a little bit of trouble because I wasn't down here right away. I'd take the water tank off some milk cows and so they got started. But uh, yeah, I probably better go follow him. He's gonna have a load here pretty way it looks here. Somewhere over there, maybe he'll have a load.
driving up and down this bumpy field road is really getting to me. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna get some rain over there. It's kind of dark colored. I don't know if we're gonna get something or not. I sure hope we get some rain. Oh man, I tell you. We need rain. We need two inches of rain. Everything just needs rain around here. Well, this is the last load for today. I'm just going to cut the rest of that down and then um, we'll be good to go. So, oh, close the tractor here. Or the, yeah. Close the dump box. You gotta watch those tires sometimes. Yeesh. <laughs> so I'll go run this home and get it unloaded. And then I want to try and uh, get uh, those last eight rows cultivated. And then I gotta do the feeding chores yet. And I still gotta eat. Oh, I'm so sick and tired of doing this hay. I just want to get done. So sick of it I can scream. <laughs> oh. Okay, I'm gonna put some stuff on the feet away in here for the other. Oh, darn it. Right, I'm gonna put some stuff on the feet away in here for the young stock. And then I'm gonna go out and finish those last eight rows because it's getting pretty dark that way, which is a good thing. Yes, I do want it to rain, but I just want to get that those soybeans cultivated over there before it does rain. And then once we're done chopping, we'll go full bore on cultivating everything else. Then we get to that other bean field over there. Eventually, because like I said before, I think I said before we'll get that. We're gonna put the TG210 on one of the eight row cultivators and uh, do that. Now it'll be the four row. I guess part of it is we're trying to do, I want to do two jobs at the same time, but I can only do one job at one time. I'm trying, but I can't be two people. Can't be two places at the same time. Something brewing over there. I sure hope. Sure hope we get some rain out of that. I don't know if we will or not, but I hope. But I better get this thing fired up and uh, get moving and get these last eight rows done. I'm sure we'll have a pretty rainbow at the end, but. Uh, Oh, I hope that rain comes here. Looks like it's really downpouring right over there. Just got that all cultivated just in time. We'll see how much rain we get out of this, but I gotta go get back to the feeding chores here, so I gotta run in the rain.
Hey everybody, it is another day and it's kind of raining out just a little bit right now. We're getting a little bit of a light, light rain. And yeah, so anyways, um, I'm gonna go feed the milk cows. We got the cows all milked already. Um, my brother Steve, he went down while I was doing the milking. He went down to the hay field that we were chopping on yesterday and cut down the, was gonna cut down the rest of the hay. And I think that he, uh, he was gonna itch in my back. So I think he uh, should be about done with that. So, and what are we gonna do for the rest of the day? Well, um, when he gets back, um, well, he'll let the cows out. Um, I need, we need to go seal that one bag up from the other day. So I haven't got that done yet. And then we also need to chop a load of hay or at least a partial load of hay so we have something to feed the young stock and so we could reload for the milk cows later and we're gonna try to um we got a pat a little pasture about a two or three that's yeah, probably about a three acre pasture we got a um, fence so we could run the milk cows in there we kind of turned it into a pasture last year so we give them a little bit more pasture so let me make sure that we have enough and it's it's kind of important too when you have like a dry spell and the grass comes back kind of slow that way the, the cattle you know they have plenty of plenty of pasture we always try to make sure that you know we give our cows what what they recommend for for grass at least 30 percent of their dry matter intake has to come from the pasture you know you can give them more from your pasture if you want you could do 40 or you can do 50 or if you want you can be an all grass fed dairy <laughs> Um, we're not an all grass fed dairy where we've never wanted to do it really because there's not really a lot of um, You got to get enough people together enough farm dairy farmers together to do it Because your milk has to go in a special truck and then you have to market that milk differently And it just wouldn't work in our area to do that. So we don't do all grass fed um, We could but we'd actually if we did do that we wouldn't get the extra premium for the milk Because we couldn't get enough people to a special truck to come out this far to do it so we would actually lose more money by going grass fed. So that's why we don't do grass fed. So, so we just, we follow the regular recommendations, 30% dry matter intake. So we want to make sure they have enough, especially like in a dry spell like we do now too. So anyways, I'm going to get there, go get the cows fed and then um, we'll go see what else happens here today. Okay, I am headed down to that field. I guess my brother, he chopped the load when he was down there. So, um, I'm gonna go down and dump it in here, then bring it back and unload some of it for feeding, so. And something else that kinda came up too, when we were, my brother and I were just actually just discussing it a little bit before I hooked up to this, uh, or got this wagon here. And um, this bean field here, I don't know, I don't know, we're thinking about replanting it uh, because the beans, like, you know, this side here isn't too bad, but when you get over that area, that really clumpy soil, I mean, it just, the stand, even right here, the stand isn't that good. And uh, otherwise, you know, some of those beans are coming up now, but if we sit there and wait, the weeds are going to get way out of control in here. And the biggest, the problem is that the soil down in the bottom on the lower ground was really clumpy. I mean, I don't know if you can see that down in there, but it just, uh, you know, it would have been fine if we had gotten a rain, an inch of rain, like a week or so after, you know, we planted it, but we did. And it just, not a very good stand out where we'd like it so I don't know we're thinking about just maybe just coming in here and working this up and replanting it I mean we tried land rolling it before we planted it but just that there wasn't enough moisture in the ground so uh, oh it's kind of frustrating still dealing with 2019's problems yeah so I don't know, we're gonna see here. We gotta see if we can get some more seed and then we'll go from there. But anyways, I better get uh, get that uh, 
head down this bumpy field road again and uh, see if we can get uh, or get that load of stuff down. We just left the cutter down in the field. So. And of course, the windshield wipers on here don't work because yeah, that wire right there. I gotta, I gotta get a new wiring harness sometime for this. Get that fixed. So I have that the list of things that need to get done around here. Here's what's left to chop, and then it'll finally be done with first cutting. Oh, I hope we get enough rain too. It helps those oats fill out a little bit more. I tell you one thing, there ain't, there ain't gonna be very much straw there because the, the oats aren't very tall because of the, the drought. <laughs> Okay guys, I'm back here. Um, I just uh, I just sealed up the bag there as you can see. I kind of forgot about it, so uh, my brother, he's getting ready to start milking. And so I, I, mean, I gotta put some tires on it yet in the morning. So I'll do that in the morning. And I gotta cut a little slit in there yet. To let the air out. Or if it gas is just a little tiny slit. And I gotta go put some silage on the feed waiting for the milk cows and I'll be done. So I guess I'll just see you guys in the morning. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is another day. I get another another day and another dollar. But uh, yeah. So, anyways, what are we doing? What's all going on around here today? Well, I'm gonna get ready to go feed the milk cows, and my brother. Um, something smells like ether in here. Oh, darn ether can. Ugh, must have leaked out a little ether. <laughs> Anyways, um, my brother and my nephew are up there fencing that um, one small two or three acre field there that so that the cows can get grazed in there and everything. So he's doing that right now. It should be done here in a little bit. They started out yesterday evening and they didn't get done. And so that way we get the cows in there. And let's see what's the next thing. Um, anyways, the next thing is... I might run to town. Well, depends on here if my brother, he's using the loader tractor. So if he's not done with the loader tractor, um, I might run to town and I gotta get some stuff at the feed store. And then um, this afternoon, if the hay gets is finally ready, uh, my cousin Matt, he's gonna come over and he's gonna run the cutter and then my brother Steve's gonna haul. And then I'm gonna start cultivating another bean field and uh do that i guess and we're still waiting on i'm not for sure we need to order if we're gonna redo reseed that one bean field we need to i'm not sure if we need to re-inoculate the beans or not since the be you know the beans were already inoculated we put in the ground so the inoculant should still be in the soil i don't know we're trying to get a hold of our soil consultant but we haven't gotten a hold of them yet if we you know 
Maybe it's just better to get some more inoculin, inoculate him, but we gotta get that. We already talked to the seed dealer. He's got the seed on hand, so we can get it and go back in there and do it. But And if I get some time too, I might switch the planter back over to beans again so we can get that field. And I wanna try to get it in by Wednesday here. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll get a better stand. We should, because we have more rain events now, so hopefully we do. So anyways, I gotta get busy. And we'll see what we what all goes down here today. Hello, okay, everybody. I am on my way into town, which I I don't think I have been to town for two weeks. Two weeks seems like a long time for me. But anyways, I'm gonna go to the feed store and get some some feed supplements, and then I. I think I'm gonna stop at the farm store and buy one thing there. And then I need to go to the auto parts store. And I'm gonna get an oil filter for the, uh, the Model A because I have not changed oil in that thing. It's been actually a while since the oil's been changed in that thing. It doesn't have a lot of hours on it. It just, it's old oil and it should just be changed. So, so I am gonna get those things done and then hopefully get out there and get some cultivating done here yet today because it is a beautiful gorgeous day Got a little waiting delay here. They're putting up a wire over here. These electrical guys are still working. And they're working on this project for six months. They're still not done yet. Now you're gonna raise a wire up to there. So I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck by the railroad tracks. Then, I gotta, then I'm gonna go out and cultivate, hopefully. Hmm. Those beans look, they're doing pretty good right out here in front of my house. They look good right now until the weeds that are in the row grow up. <laughs> oh yeah, now I gotta go and cultivate some more beans that don't look as nice as this field does. Hey everybody, I thought I'd throw a little segment in here today. We're just finishing up my first cutting hay and just driving down the old wagon trail here. It's kind of a bumpy field road that we have to go down to this uh, rented field that's about a mile from our place. And anyways, I thought I'd give a little history here on the, the 4240. Um, I don't know if Paul's never talked about it much, but um, our dad, he bought this tractor, I think it was in the spring of 1991, if I remember right. And at that time, you know, I was pretty excited about him looking for a new tractor. Our big tractor at the time was a 4020, and we don't have that one anymore. He, um, he had a deal set up with our neighbor that when my dad found a 4240, he was gonna buy the 4020 from him. So um, I just remember going to, for sure, one, one auction sale with my dad during the uh, uh, early spring. And there was a really nice 4240. It sold for, I think, like $26,000. You know, at that time, that was pretty good money. You can, there are some out there that still go for that today if they're real low hour ones, probably even more than that. But, you know, typically they were selling between like 18 to 20,000 at that time. And, and so, 
So I think my dad, he must have tried a few auction sales, didn't find one. He finally found this one on an auction sale. Oh, it was probably about 20 miles from here. Yeah, I think it sold for about 18.5. And when he first bought it, the tractor was set for 30 inch rows and we've always been 38 inch rows. So he wanted to set it out for 38. And when he was trying to set it out, he ended up breaking, there's like these, uh, well, it's like a two piece, I don't know, kind of wedge or something that goes between the, the axle and the, the wheel casting. And anyways, that thing got cracked or something in there, I think. And he needed to get that out of there, but it was, you know, really froze in there. And he ended up making a pipe to take a hammer on it. We, we took it over, we didn't have a torque at the time, so we took it over to a neighbor that had one. And, and he heated it up and hammered on it and hammered on it and just could not get it. And so finally, you know, he just said, just, just go out and use it in the field and eventually the thing will just break off, you know. So anyways, at that time, my dad was renting a piece of ground about four miles from home. Our grandma used to own it. And, uh, our maternal grandfather, uh, Bob Dahlberg was his name, he used to come out in his retirement and he'd help my dad with field work. He'd, he'd be out here from about the time you could turn a wheel in the field in the spring to the time you couldn't in the fall helping. So anyways, he was the one, and of course that was the days before anybody really had cell phones and so that thing broke off and, he, he couldn't drive the tractor so he walked over to a neighbor's and he called home and uh, told my dad that that it had happened and to come over and bring some jacks and some blocks so that they could jack it up and and get it uh, fixed here it's a quad range and uh, the B range went out on it and so I think when he he got down with field work he usually didn't use B range for field work it was a little too uh, fast but it's just kind of nice for doing a lot of other jobs driving around but anyways he, he took it in and took it into John Deere and had him get that fixed. It was a pretty expensive bill. I don't even remember what it cost at that time. But, uh, but then after that, I don't think we've really ever had this into town too much. It's, it's been a pretty good tractor over the years. You know, there's a few, a few repair things like this last winter. I'm sure a lot of you have seen Paul's video when he was repairing the PTO. But um, other than that, it's, it's been a pretty good, pretty good machine. It's been kind of nice. So when we, um, you know, this is like I say, my dad's big tractor until he passed away, and it was our big tractor for a few more years after that. But uh, lately, you know, the last probably 15 years, it's pretty much just been a. Uh, lighter work tractor, you know, just haul manure and haul silage wagons, things of that nature is all we do with it, so anyways, that's some history behind it. Thanks a lot for watching. Talk to y'all later.
got uh, some more. That was the last bit of first cutting hay that chopped is getting dumped in there. So, anyways, I better get the speeder wagon loaded up so that job is done, and then we'll probably wrap this video up. Okay, guys, um, everything is done. I just got done doing the last chores for the day. Just had to feed my cat, do my calf chores here, and. So we're done with everything, and um, whew, it was a long day today, and uh, yeah, so anyways, um, well, I guess it's after midnight, so <laughs> in the morning, or during the day, we plan on, or tomorrow, the next, well, in the daylight anyways, we're going to hopefully um, do some more cultivating, and um, work at getting ready to do that replant in that one field and uh, yeah so that will be that and we're all done with first cutting hay and hopefully we get some rain we're in we're in uh, well, we're in bad shape we just need some rain we got a little bit of the little bit of rain that we have gotten has been enough to keep the crops alive but they need more we need a good one inch soaker maybe even more but hopefully it doesn't come as a downpour when it comes but yeah, so we'll see what happens here. I'm tired, so I'm gonna say good night and um, thanks for watching, guys. And uh, please don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. And check me out Instagram and Twitter at Organic Dairyman. And um, I'll catch you later.